really interesting book, really good book to read. And there's a couple of quotes I want to read by Pope John Paul II, who started all this stuff. 2004, Pope John Paul established the Vatican Office for Church and Sport. He is dedicated to spreading the gospel through the world of athletics. That, that happened in 2004. And this is what he said. The church looks at sports with great sympathy since it considers the human body as the masterpiece of creation. God, the creator, gave new life to the body, thus making it the instrument of an immortal soul. Man became a living being, moreover, redemption by Christ turned the human body into a temple of the Holy Spirit, thus making man a member of the Christ destined to be resurrected from his own ashes to live in eternity thereafter. When sport is practiced in a healthy way, it exalts the dignity of human, the human body without taking or risking idolatry. The church sees sport as a mighty element of moral and social education. So what does that mean? It's pretty important, the way our church sees sports. Huh. One more reading for you. This is how important you are to Pope Francis. The presence, I'm going to skip through the readings. And this is what he says. This is the meat and potatoes that he wrote, just wrote in May to, to all of you. So we're going to give, if you want to read this, you're welcome to. I have some copies for everyone. The presence of a good coach educator is revealed providentially, especially in the years of adolescence and early youth, when the personality is, is in full development and in search of models for reference and identification, when the need is keenly perceived. The influence of an educator, especially for young people, depends more on what he is as a person and the way that he lives than what he says. Therefore, how important it is that the coach be an example of integrity, of coherence, of good judgment and partiality, but also of joy of living, patience, of capacity of esteem, benevolence, to raise our gaze to God. And there's a lot more than that. You gotta read this. You gotta be this. So here's a Pope writing a letter to you about how important you are. He cares. Why? Why? Why would the Pope waste his popely time on us? He's got a lot of fish to fry. He's got big things. Why would he waste his time on you? Huh? Why? It starts with an I. Second letter is N. Anybody want to guess? Huh? Who said that? You did? What's your name? Leslie. Leslie. What, what do you coach? Girls tennis. Girls tennis. Did you guys hear that? What's the word? Influence. 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 Just so you understand, we're on the same page. Everyone influences somebody. Everyone in this room has a tremendous influence over somebody. So the question now becomes, what kind of influence are you going to be? 
Are you going to be a bad influence? Or are you going to be a good influence? Are you going to be a holy, Christ-like influence? Or an unholy, unchrist-like influence? Are you going to influence for bad or good? Are you going to be, what are you going to do? You're at the crossroads. The reason it's important to the Pope, just so we're on the same page, the reason it is important to Pope John Paul II is because they're tracking your time. They communicate with God. They're in communion with our God. And he's tracking our time. And you know what he's decided, God's decided, and he's communicated to the Holy Fathers? We're out of whack. Because he's watching what we do. Not what we say, but he's watching what we do. He's tracking your time. He's tracking my time. He's seeing what we worship. Because whatever you worship, you spend time doing. Whatever you spend time doing, you become. We can talk, I mean, they were talking about, our priests were talking about Scottie Pippen and Bill Cartwright backing people down. Everyone had that vision in there. Yeah, <laughs> remember him back in the day. Yeah, remember, yeah. Bill, man, that's a little, that little puppy hook he had. Yeah, remember him, man. You remember? We, those guys are burned into our memory. God's tracking our time. What are we doing with our influence? What are we doing with our time? He's tracking our time. Rebecca, what have we done with Sundays? Really? We're as bad as everybody else, Catholics. Christians, we're playing every Sunday. 10 a.m. We're doing it. Catholics, are you kidding me? Really? There's got my coach who wasn't even at a Catholic school, we would never play on Sundays. Never, 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 never. Ever played on Sundays. And we weren't we were in a public school for goodness sake. Really? Come on. I'm challenging all of us. Not just you, me too. I'm in the same boat you are. Soccer and everyone's playing on Sunday and we're going this way and that way. I'm going, what the flock of singles? Really? Come on, folks. Come on, educators, schedulers. Hey, Catholics, run this stuff. Get together and go, we ain't going to play on Sunday. It's our league. No, we'll play on Saturday. We'll play two Saturday. Three. Doesn't matter, but we ain't playing on Sunday. It's your ball game. You got the ball. You got the umpire. Make up the game. I'm serious. I'm going to say this across the country. Everywhere they, they won't want me to come. I don't care. I'm going to invite myself and sneak in those meetings. Because it's really important. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's important. It's really important. This is everything. We can't do this. What who are we? To take off the shirt. Take off the cross. Let's just be. This, this, they're not mascots. You're either are or you're not. You're either in or you're out. Don't be a, don't be like I was. You know, we're, we're the church of Laodicea. And, and Christ, he, God hates this stuff. He says, I wish you were either hot or you're cold. But since you're lukewarm, I'm going to what? Revelation chapter 3. Spew you out of my mouth. We made God want to vomit. We make him sick. Just like if you leave a, a Coke outside for two hours, pop that bad boy open after you go for a four mile run. <laughs> That's what we make God do. We make him ill. Do you understand that? We can't be mamby pamby Christians. We either are or we're not. We're either in or we're out. We're either hot or we're cold. If we're either one, if we're not either one, if we're in the middle, we embarrass God. And we make the nation confused. Everyone wants 
the bomb and if we're not either hot or cold. Either be in or out. I don't care which one you choose, but be good at either one. If you're going to be a bad Catholic, get out. If you're going to be a good Catholic, get all the way in. Get off the fence. It's important. From Pope Pius XII, sport properly directed, develops character, makes a man courageous, a generous loser, and a gracious victor. It refines the senses, sports does. It gives intellectual penetration and steals the will to endurance. It is not merely a physical development, then. Sport, rightly understood, is an occupation of the whole man. And while perfecting the body as an instrument of the mind, it also makes the mind itself a more refined instrument for the church, for the search and communication of truth. And it helps man to achieve that end to which all others must be subservient, the service and praise of God. Period. That's why we play. That's why we participate. That's why you coach. That's why you're in this. It is. And now I know it's tough. I coach as well. So when you're, baseball's fun, football's fun, softball's fun, basketball's fun. I love the fact that when you're in high school, you don't have to play everybody. And I hate the fact that when you're in high school, you don't have to play everybody. I love the fact in high school you have JVs and sophomores and frosh sophomores. And you, you're, you're trying to get everyone to play as long as you possibly can. And the more you can get them to play, the more lessons of life they can learn, and the better people they can become if we're teaching the lessons of life. Do you get it? It's all about that, including. She said, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Team sports, you know that. Um, he said to me earlier, we were talking about Hall of Famers. You know, who is the most famous Hall of Famer, and he has a name that is significant to the playoffs. What's his name? What do you got? Who Reggie do you Jackson. Say it again? Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. And what was his nickname? What happens in October? World Series. Playoffs, right? World Series. But he's the only guy. You talk about Winfield, all these other Hall of Famers. They don't go crazy in the World Series. Why? 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 Play the whole year that way. But if I'm pitching against them, we're playing against Reggie Jackson, Dave Winfield, you know, Father Chase. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Walk him. We're going to pitch around him. We're going to pitch to Daryl. Four. Who's coming up? Daryl. Yeah, four. Daryl Miller's coming up with my little tired swing. You know, Winfield got it in the in the he got in the the batter's box. He was he was in there. He bit something. I was scared to death. Just, I was a catcher. He comes, he kicked dirt. He's coming up. Boom, boom, boom. Stick it, sir. Boom, boom. Six foot six. There, there you go. Okay, throw the ball. I dare you. I was scared too. I was like. Curve, fly, whatever, something. Yeah, you don't let this guy hit. <laughs> That's why you don't read about those guys. What does that mean to this? Nothing. I just kicked him to my mouth. That was kind of <laughs> <laughs> but, but it does mean something because the least of these, when you need them on a team, they win for you. They're the ones that are going to help you. They're the ones who are going to win that championship. They're the ones who are going to win that playoff game. They're the ones. So you never neglect the least of these. But more important than that, the least of these, they'll end up owning their business. They'll, they'll, you'll make a difference if you treat those guys well. Last story, then. We had a bat boy. Two stories. Pretty good. <laughs> well, this is, this is kind of funny. So we're we're in a we're in a meeting, and you have you ever seen a fly? 
you know, the window, the big window. Anybody ever see a fly? So you know how they're buzzing around, you know. This window had a little, little opening on the side. We're in one of our meetings in college. So there's one, this guy on our team, he had, he had one of those swings. He, 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 he would, if he made contact, he'd kill it. He would, like, swing almost straight up, like a hairpin swing. So if he caught it, he would kill it. But he didn't catch it very much. So, so when our coach stops in the middle of the meeting, and this fast fly boy, bing, 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 bing. The guy's a smart guy, too, this, Wolf, this kid's name Wolf. Bing, bing. He goes, Wills, that fly is smarter than you are. <laughs> it goes out this little thing. He goes, you know why? He goes, if you were a fly, we've been trying to get you to change your swing, you'd be going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you won't make an adjustment. So I'm yelling and screaming, but we just got to make an adjustment. This is not life shattering. Make an adjustment. Set some, set some goals for yourself. Think about, hey, how am I going to be different this year? What kind of culture? How can I make an adjustment? You know what? We're not going to get far in life going, ee, 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 ee. Someone said it earlier. You, know, you just dust it off and make a new day. You, know, you learn something at the at the uh, coaches convention, you had another drill, really? Come on, let's be different. Let's make an adjustment, right? Number one. Number two, last one. Develop your philosophy. Come up with your philosophy. Come up with a mantra. Come up with something that means something to you. Come up with your your spin on things. Something that's yours. Be creative. Come up with your spin this year. Come up with a mantra. Or if you can't come up with one, help you. have your team help you or your coaches help you. Come up with something. Something different. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do this year. This is our champion. This is what we're gonna, this is how we're gonna go. How much time do we got, coach? You gotta go? Pretty much. We have an adoration, right? 2.54, so I've almost been an hour, i got four minutes, but I'm done. That's it. Very simple, right? Very simple, but very effective. So, I just pray that you guys would, from the core of your being, come up with something different. I challenge you from the core of your being. You're doing a great job, great work. I hate preaching to the choir, because you're already singing most of you guys are going, you're sitting there going, God, dude, just shut up, black guy. We're doing this already, you know. We've been doing this for 25 years. Come on, I'm 76. They made me cut of this. I don't want to be here. I'm already doing this. I'm sorry. I know you are. Most of you guys are doing this. I know. I know you're doing it. I apologize. But I have to preach the gospel. Because there may be one of you or two of you that need a re little refresher. One of you, or two, or three of you may go, go, golly, I forgot about that. Our coach at Rosary, a basketball coach, he, 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 he said, we, I talked to him about these things. He goes, Daryl, I used to do these things. I just lost my way. Sometimes we get lost. My wife, I'm, you know, Coach Chase told you, Father Chase, 